all and welcome back. I hope everyone is doing really well. Interesting video today is we're going to be looking at some updates across Hedera in terms of sentiment, as well as some big things happening in the near future as we move closer and closer towards decentralization. First things first, though, let's take a look at some quick headlines in terms of widespread adoption for cryptocurrency, which continues ramping up week on week, despite what is happening in the markets to do with pricing. The UAE regulator is to accept license applications from crypto firms seeking to provide services in the country. So United Arab Emirates effectively beginning crypto licensing processes, which is, of course, very important for adoption of new businesses and the Web3 economies. Russia as well is preparing draft laws to allow use of crypto for international trade settlements. And of course, this is wrapping up into larger debates as well as to whether the threat of the US dollar no longer being the default reserve of the globe is coming into fruition. And there were comments actually from Donald Trump himself effectively saying that would be akin to the United States losing a war if the dollar lost provenance globally. This does appear to be happening as well as trade relations continue to break down and cryptocurrency becomes an ever easier tool to use in order to settle cross-border payments at low, low cost without the fear of pegging to something like the US dollar, which of course is being controlled by a central bank in a foreign nation. Coinbase as well is considering leaving the United States if regulatory clarity does not emerge. And that's come directly from the CEO. And again, Brian Armstrong is highlighting the chances of Coinbase moving out of the US if those regulatory concerns are not answered or even clarity being provided. And of course, we're seeing more and more of this from not only the United States, but places in Europe as well, where regulatory clarity is really hit and miss. Let's look at Hedera then before I dive into that massive update towards the end of this video. See Coinman here. This baby can do a billion transactions in under three weeks. And that is, of course, Hedera processing nearly a billion transactions every couple of weeks or so. If we look at Metrica for a dashboard overview, I've currently got it on the three months. If I go down to the one month time frame, we can see we've had max TPS of nearly 6,000 transactions, 1.64 billion transactions in just over a month, with an average TPS of 615. Average time to consensus, i.e. how long it takes to process a transaction is still sub five seconds. And our total accounts now are just, just shy of nearly 2 million accounts active on the network. I think if you look at some different dashboards, it does say 2 million, but it does appear to be very close. And of course, we've still got a lot of transactions being processed by Atma.io in terms of that use case. Hedera as well do appear to be doubling down, if not tripling down on the sustainability um, proposition that Hedera brings. First thing I wanted to actually note was that Hedera have changed their logo to being green at the moment on Hedera, on Twitter, sorry. I'm not sure if that's part of some larger event and eventually it'll go back to being black. But really interesting is they are doubling down, like I said, on that sustainability and green sort of uh, prospect of Hedera Hashgraph itself, of course, being carbon neutral and then carbon negative with a lot more of the offsetting that the chain is actually doing. And of course, there is actually now a website or a new page I should say on the Hedera.com website forward slash green. We are proud to showcase Hedera's ever growing ecosystem of sustainability focused projects. Over the coming days, we'll be diving deeper into some of these projects and how they're using Web3 to build towards a greener future. Hashtag Earth Week. So I believe that's why the logo is currently green on there. But of course, we can see the balance sheet of Planet on Hedera. And there's loads of different use cases here from Standard Bank to Avery Dennison, of course, Timeless. Um, we've got Suku. Uh, Earth 1.1, Miko, Dovu, etc. And in fact, if we flick across and look at this, Hedera for sustainability, enabling fair carbon markets with industry leading trust and transparency. So a balance sheet for our planet, the need for greater security, transparency and efficiency within industries such as carbon markets has never been more pressing. And that's obviously where we're seeing a, as I've mentioned in previous videos, this is a massive theme when it comes to business transformation as it currently stands. Being green is incredibly important and having the environmental impact being assessed and understood as well as priced into a lot of operations is of course just as important for financial investment and alike. It's essential that greater, more accurate granular data can be logged and accessed without corruption and collusion. The Guardian on Hedera combines a trust layer for multi-party data with digital measurement, reporting and verification tools to strengthen workflows that lead to tokenized quantitative outcomes. I've got a dedicated video on the channel talking about the Hedera Guardian, but effectively it's the service they are using um, for 
uh, sustainability stuff on top of Hedera. We've got loads of other things as well. Minting and exchanging of climate assets can obviously be done on Hedera, taking advantage of those fixed, predictably low fees being denominated in US dollars paid in HBAR. You've got the world's most sustainable network. Of course, we've got those graphs from the UCL comparing different distributed ledger networks. I'll show that again in a second because it is still mind blowing to me. Trusted granular, transparent data as well via the Hedera consensus service. Timeless, again, there's a few different dedicated videos on the channel, but they are providing reporting and guarantee of origin solutions with over 851 billion US dollars in value of global carbon markets. Of course, our old faithful at Avery Denison. So there's a lot going on here in terms of the green notion or um, sort of prospect, as I said, of Hedera Hashgraph, and there's a lot of emphasis being put on top of this. Again, we see this come out from the UCL Center for Blockchain Technology. Hedera retweeted it. Greenest of the green, Hedera has no equal. The graphic says it all. We see here the kilowatt hour per transaction of Hedera of 0 0.000003 kilowatt hours per transaction. And then in multiples of, because the numbers are so much larger, going up the scale, we can see BNB chain being 19 times that of Hedera, Solana 170 times, near 200 times scrolling further down avalanche and nearly 800 times visa which of course is a very interesting one and nearly a thousand times uh, tezos 3000 ethereum even now at proof of stake and no longer at proof of work is still 3300 times cardano which of course was meant to be the golden child the chosen one 13,000 times and elrond right at the other end of that scale at 34,000. and of course we haven't even got uh, Bitcoin on here because I believe this is just for proof of state networks. There aren't actually any proof of work networks on here uh, on this chart because, of course, it's ridiculous in terms of kilowatt hours per transaction. And that's why Hedera, uh, sorry, Ethereum has now made the cut. More marketing as well for Hedera clearly taking place. We've got this billboard uh, up in, I'm not even sure where this actually is. Uh, doesn't even say. So, Interesting billboard here, someplace in the United States we can clearly see, see some different NFTs and stuff, low fixed fees, scalable transactions, more marketing taking place for Hedera, more eyes on the project, more potential in the future. Avery Dennison as well, the leading use case on Hedera, are pleased to announce that they have joined the Global Battery Alliance, GBA underscore org, which is a partnership of over 120 organizations and governments dedicated to promoting environmental sustainability within battery production. And of course, this goes hand in hand with their uh, connected cloud service being run on Hedera. Potentially with them joining this organization of the Battery Alliance, we'll start seeing battery components and manufacturing being run through their cloud platform. And of course, those transactions will be logged immutably on the scalable DLT that is, of course, Hedera Hashgraph. It's hopefully starting to build a bigger picture in a lot of your minds of how widespread the use cases are for Hedera Hashgraph and how unlimited the potential is going into the near future. And of course, we've got more and more of those use cases looking to go live, hopefully very soon. Again, we don't know. It's kind of how long is a piece of string kind of argument in terms of release dates. But things like the Coupon Bureau as well are completely game changing in a different sector when it comes to redemption of coupons and promotional codes. Of course, there's a lot of fraud with those kinds of things and an immutable chain really does solve a lot of those uh, issues. Some breaking news as well. Community nodes are coming soon. HIP 690. Identify community nodes in address book and related API has been committed to the Hedera Governing Council for approval. So we'll be finding out more information when it comes to community nodes. And of course, this step towards decentralization. Here is the Hedera improvement proposal over on GitHub. So the abstract is add a property to the address book to indicate whether a node belongs to a council member or a community member. So we'll start going past just the council members effectively running the nodes and community members will be able to run those nodes. This HIP 690 will be the precursor to that going live. And of course, they need this in place in order to differentiate between them. The motivation here is as we begin onboarding node operators outside of the governing council members, i.e. decentralized nodes, as a part of the community node project, there is a desire to be able to use a query node ID and basically work out whether it's a community or council node. This information is important to users when choosing a node to stake to, and this information can be made available in Hashscan and the partners can expose this data when offering staking to customers. In order to support this, mirror node explorers need to be able to reliably know which nodes are actual council or community members so they can expose this data to the end user. Although this can be done manually, of course, very hard to maintain as the community grows. Therefore, we need to define a systemic 
or systematic path to query if a node is community nodes or not. Currently, council members have their accounts hard coded. They also need a way to rotate their account numbers. There is separate work going on to make that happen. Adding a community node flag is required prerequisite. Application developers also need, a, need to know a way which nodes are council members versus community nodes so they can identify these two types of nodes in different applications. Not only going to the rest of this, but of course there is more rationale and user stories as to what is going on here, as well as some different things and how we can teach this Hedera uh, protobuf documentation. Mirror node documentation needs to be updated as well as some other rejected ideas in here. Backwards compatibility is important. What is very, very crucial to say here though is clearly this HIP 690 is incredibly important and a step closer, a massive precursor to community nodes and decentralization on Hedera. And finally, all of those arguments can be silenced to do with decentralization. I mean, the argument itself anyway isn't really uh, a mainstay. I've done several videos in the past talking about why Hedera is actually more decentralized than the likes of Ethereum or Bitcoin chains, despite being run by governing council members, just because of the way Hedera itself is actually set up to run Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment, drop a like if you've got something to say. Plenty more videos coming in the future. Of course, I am still trying to ramp up activity, but at the moment, as I've said, the markets are quite quiet and it's loose on the ground in terms of news. If there's anything you guys want to see covered though, some video ideas, please make sure you drop them in the description. I will always consider them. Until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.